We are not refugees, but we are freedom fighters who are preparing ourselves for taking over the reign of power in Namibia when the time comes. We know that our cause was a just cause. As Africa had no right to rule our, over our country. Who is in favor of independence for Namibia and who is not? Namibia lies along the Atlantic seaboard in the southwestern region of Africa. Its vast territory is nearly four times the size of the United Kingdom. Namibia has about two million inhabitants, the overwhelming majority of whom are the indigenous African people. Now we are driven from our own country, living abroad in humiliating circumstances and conditions. Why are we in Angola and not inside Namibia? Why are we suffering? Why are we not having the riches of Namibia? I have not been home for 20 years. For 20 years I have been out of sight. I have not been touched and I have learned to be homesick here in exile where life is not so bright. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. I have not been touched. I have been searched by bullets through my camouflage going through my flesh, leaving my heart so fresh, I wish to feel again how life feels. Swapo is a liberation movement, the fight for the liberation of Namibia, has hundreds and thousands of its members outside Namibia who have fled to the country because of the oppression inside Namibia. After the collapse of the Portuguese colonial empire in Africa, many of our people who have been subjected to torture, brutality and floggings crossed the border of Angola into Angola and then finally into Zambia. So we had this big number of people and we decided to ask the government of Zambia to give us a place where we can set up a temporary exile camp. This is how Nyango was established. Hello, how are you? Fine. Uh, we've just arrived last night from Lusaka. I put a letter for you from your wife. I have a letter for you from your husband. How is my husband? He's fine. And I've also got something for doing his son. Huh? Bingo. Huh? Can we look for him? Huh? Bingo! Oh, Bingo. How are you? You're fine. I've got a gift for you from your mother. It's your birthday. Yeah, thank you. Yeah.
From exile when I return, I'm going to beg someone to introduce the newborn babies, help me identify those grown-ups, and lead me to the cemetery where friends have long gone. Today, there is over 100,000 South African racist troops in Namibia, thus excluding the so-called uh, citizen forces, poor commandos, mercenaries from all over Western Europe, North America, mainly Canada and United States of America. We are a colony that's unique in the history of colonialism. We are next door to our colonial master. That makes it extremely difficult. Reinforcements of troops can arrive in a matter of hours. Conditions in sub-Saharan Africa have been receiving special attention at the annual meeting of the International Monetary Fund. South Africa is one of the regimes that is so vicious. After killing people at home, after subjecting them to all sorts of humiliations and tortures, and people run away from this ill treatment, that regime cross into neighboring countries and go and massacre refugees, children, women, elderly people. It has done so here in Angola, in Kasinga. Hundreds of our people have been pushed. It has followed our people in Zambia. And it is even proud to say that we shall follow you wherever you go. After the Kasinga massacre, most of the mothers died, or let me say many, lots of mothers died in Kasinga. So the party decided to build this center in order to bring up those kids in a proper way. Let me say the aim and objective of this center is to look after those kids, the orphans, and those who are sent by the party in a party mission or for scholarship or any mission by the party. We have been a program of sending mothers to, for further training abroad in other countries and other schools. As soon as their children are over the age of two and in good health, then these children are taken to Panza Norte where they are taken care of by SWAP.
responsibility of the mothers here is to take care of the children. Each mother is given six kids to look after as her own children. So to feed them, clothe them, collecting food from the, for them from the kitchen, and then she has to take them to sleep where they are sleeping in the barracks. Just how far is Robben Island from a black child at play? What forces take his father there with all the world between? Oh, mother, caution your warrior son again, or else he'll show his might. When the German imperialists invaded our country, our forefathers, like Chief uh, Hendrik Vetboy, Chief Maharero, Chief Mandume, Chief Mpumbu Yashirongo, and the others fought heroically against the German invaders. South Africa occupied Namibia in July 1915. It was immediately following the breakout of the First World War. South Africa, of course, had wanted to grab uh, the former German colony of Southwest Africa. They had the intention of turning Namibia into a fifth column of the Union of South Africa. It was uh, important that South Africa must get out of uh, Namibia and we uh, get uh, under the rule of the Trustship Council of the United Nations, like the other uh, mandated territories, Tanzania... Just how far is Robben Island from the United Nations headquarters? Have I time to ponder now when patriots are drilling fast, spears are flying, the shields are once more bloody, for the drums of war are beating again. We felt now that it was not only uh, the Ovambo people who were oppressed by the South African regime, and we felt that it was uh, imperative that we must start organizing all the indigenous people in Namibia into one organization. And this is what led to the formation of Southwest, of Southwest Africa People's Organization, SWAPO. We draw great inspirations from the uh, struggles of the oppressed people of the world over, and particularly in Africa, particularly after the achievement of independence of Ghana. We have realized that uh, unless we, we do something ourselves inside Namibia, we will remain colonized by the racist, fascist South African regime. So we mobilized the, the peasants, the workers, we organized underground, and it was not so easy for the enemy to find out, because the enemy normally does uh, underestimate the intelligence of the oppressed people. On behalf of my fellow Paneas, let me welcome you all to this Kinskate Palace to commemorate 
the fourth anniversary of the foundation of our movement, the Swapo Panea movement. One day we shall get ourselves in a free independent Namibia and live in peace like other children. recognized by international community as the sole and authentic representative of our people. Not because we just wanted to be recognized like that. It's a fact that is being recognized that we are the people who are carrying out the cycle today and who are capable of bringing about the change in that country. Thank you. I want, this is rejoice, I want rejoice to be the first president of, uh, no, I, not the first because we are going to be maybe independent next day, <laughs> maybe the first president of Namibia. <laughs> intensifies the necessity for women to participate in the uh, decision-making process became an obvious issue and there was no way uh, our men were going to close our, their eyes and uh, say no no women you cannot uh, participate in this yet we are participating in every aspect of the struggle Viva! And then we had to evacuate the place and we settled in the lower panza. And because of uh, there was a lot of sickness and then we had to move to this place. So in 1979 we, we moved from uh, lower panza to panza sur. We are the parents. We have to take care of the, the, the children and then our responsibility to bring up the younger children so we know that those children are the future of independent Namibia. Uh, 
Across the hill stands erect a white man's house. In a poorly ventilated shack, the black man survives like a mouse. A shadowy body in motion, coupled with a human heart in confinement. Chains at heart, the wound of suffering, oozing ceaseless pain. Street drops zigzagging down his muscled black neck in vain. Handkerchief not possessed, the hardened black hand wipes it off. Our family was separated. Uh, according to the contract uh, uh, immigration, of, uh, which is put uh, by the uh, resistance of South Africa. So my wife has to stay at the so-called homeland while I'm, I'm always going to work to the south part of Namibia uh, to the control system. The contract labor system um, is a, a system whereby the recruits go to a particular point where they are recruited and when they are recruited they are sent to a uh, dispatching center where they would be masters pay a certain amount of money to that particular body and when the person is recruited at first they were given uh, a string tied around their necks and on that string there was a, a piece of lead. After some years it was changed that this piece of string was put on the wrist. And when he travels, he was given a label on his shirt. And that label indicates to which master this uh, employee was going. Across the hill stands Iraq, a white man's house. A mile or two away, a black worker's heart. Much the white man sips his wine, an alcoholic. Much the black man drinks his brew, a drunkard. Equal, not even when they are dead. There, a white man's graveyard. Here, a black man's slave yard. Across the hill stands erect a white man's house. Black man's shack is empty. He is gone with his powers to join fighters forever opposed to contrast imposed by those who suppose black man is less human. But who then is the loud? This is the Namibia Education Center in Kwanza Sur. It is a school for the exiled Namibian children. It started in 1978 when our people moved from the south of Angola to the more safer interior provinces of Kwanza Sur. It is a part of the overall work of the Department of Education and Culture of Swapo of Namibia. The population is over 7,000. Our movement decided to use English as the official language, not because of love of the English as a people or as a culture or as a country but in order to facilitate 
our communication with other neighboring African countries and with the world at large. Swap of Namibia has provided us with all the necessary facilities for education. We have to make our children understand the need of education. In the settlements, there is a daycare center where women drop their children in the morning and get them in the evening so that during the day they are free to attend classes. Now, students, here we have to be careful about the antenatal clinic, monitoring the health condition of the mother. Swabo is making a productive and politically conscious force out of these Namibians by equipping them with necessary skills and creating a dynamic environment for social and cultural interaction that will lay a foundation for a shared experience and common national outlook. As far as our service are concerned, after seven days here, I think it's ready now to be distressed and go home. She came first in her class with a distinction. Students we are training here are not only for the purpose of saving those abroad, but we have a long-term plan for them to save in a free Namibia. I joined SWAPO right in Namibia. I left and SWAPO sent me to this training. And after training, I'm just following the SWAPO policy to transmit whatever I have to others. What we teach them is uh, to love their people, to make sure that everything they have, they have to pass to others. Not only medical workers, but to the community as a whole. We want to be self-reliant. We do things by ourselves. We do it now. So you have to learn pattern, then get one centimeter. Here in the in the Panza Sur, we have uh, women's projects. We have weaving. They are the ones making uniforms for our school population here, and uh, they are producing very beautiful materials, which. We are sitting outside. First of all, we are oppressed as blacks, and secondly, it's women, and thirdly, it's workers. Our women should stop thinking that the problem is our women who are our men who are oppressing us. But it's the regime, the system itself, which is the apartheid, which is exported from South Africa to our country. So we feel that if our women can stand up and uh, decide to take up arms. I think that struggle will, will be waged at a larger scale than if we can sit back in the kitchens and think that we are only women who are supposed to remain in the kitchen and start cooking for our husbands. I think anything which a man can do, even ourselves, we can, we can do it. <laughs> South Africa is sterilizing women, whether one wants to be sterilized or not, it's a must. And sometimes they do it very secretly, 
women are told to come to the clinics to have pap smear test to have all these kind of uh, examinations and at the same time while examining examining women they are applying some chemicals or substance in the uterus of uh, women so that uh, they don't deliver is regarded as a very fundamental cell of our society and we have decided to this effect to protect support and promote marriages in swapo because this way we think we can keep our society together they are also guiding principles so when people get get married when they are formally married we expect the couple to observe the principle of equality of men and women. In other words, the husband or wife should treat the other as an equal. We do not um, condone uh, polygamy in Swapo. So we only contract a marriage if we have certified ourselves that the couple in question has not been married before. The South African prosecute anybody, everybody who is engaged himself or herself to the process of liberation. And uh, this is a problem, but uh, the church, of, of course, is under uh, uh, harassment of South African government uh, because most of the uh, uh, priests, pastors, they have been uh, expelled. We have missionaries have been expelled from Namibia. We have uh, Bishop Wood and others, of course, have been expelled because they side with the oppressed people uh, in Namibia. And we have also other church properties that have been destroyed by the by the South African uh, government. Yeah, he says that you, the church and Swapo, they are one. Because this, the church and Swapo, they are fighting uh, the liberation struggle for Namibia. <laughs> When I return, I'm going to beg someone to touch me very tenderly and gradually put me at ease. I wish to feel again how life feels. Oh, 
life of Namibian people is permitted by apartheid system, which denies people good education. Therefore, when the UN assumed the direct responsibility over Namibia in 1966, they created the Council for Namibia in 1967, which assumed direct responsibility and has issued travel documents to Namibians and eventually thought that the UN should set up some kind of training institution to prepare Namibians for future responsibilities. The Namibian economy is based on minerals. This is a calculated policy by the South African regime so that Namibia will continue to be a market for the produces of South Africa. The roadways, the railways and the airways are all linked to South Africa. We know that the sector such as manufacturing of food is neglected. Agriculture is neglected. There is still no university in Namibia today. Education is key. Education not in its narrow sense but in its broad sense. Knowledge, skills, competences that individuals can be given. After they have finished their primary education, if they cannot go further to secondary school, they go to technical school like the one in Sumbe to learn auto mechanics, uh, how to work with metal, uh, carpentry, building construction. <laughs> This project is part of the nationhood project for Namibia aimed at preparing Namibians to take over the machinery of the government when Namibia becomes independent. The project is funded by the United Nations and it's operating under the charter of the United Nations Vocational Training Center. means uh, AC. So, uh, previously, last week we were using this side. Our young people are keeping that tradition alive. To sing together, to dance together, to laugh together, and to, to tell stories together. Because this binds the community together, and this ties us to our motherland. understand my silence, the letter that didn't arrive about our clan and tribe, for now I only belong to my country and nation, still I wish to be touched by hand and atmosphere of people in a peaceful sphere. Namibia is a, is a huge territory, it has enough mineral resources which can enable all the Namibian citizens to live a decent life. The delay of the independence of Namibia allows the ruthless exploitation of these resources by the South African regime and its allies, the TNCs. Transnational corporations which have their growth dug in the Namibian resources are Americans, British, Canadians, South Africans, and French, German to a lesser extent. They are busy extracting uranium, diamond and other metals from Namibia. They are operating on contracts and licenses issued to them by the occupation regime of South Africa. 
They are also using the Namibian workers on the basis of the racist laws of South Africa with discriminatory wage and salary scales. The real income of the black people in comparison in rural area is 1 to 25 meaning that if a black person is earning a hundred rand a month the other white person actually would earn 2,500 rand this country i don't know what it would be like if it had been left to them solely and wholly there would have been barren there would have been nothing they have a great deal to be thankful for Blacks have got no right to organize trade unions. There are no laws protecting the right and the interests of the workers. So what is happening in fact is a continuous and intensified process of exploitation of Namibia's resources and of the labor of our workers. Just how far is Robben Island from the London Stock Exchange? You couldn't hear my talking war drums for so loud and also useless are the enemy's cannon roll. Do you think that the rule of the whites will last forever? We will fight for it. Waging an armed struggle. People are sacrificing at the battlefront. People have been talking, talking, petitions were coming from Namibia, but they achieved nothing. Therefore, a decision was taken that we must uh, have our people trained and uh, fight South Africa and chase it out by means of arms. We are fighting a war against the racist regime of South Africa, not because they are white, but because they are colonizing us. When we started the war in 1966, South Africa thought that there was just a band of uh, uncivilized, not well organized guerrillas that they can overrun within several hours. But it took them now over 18 years, and they have realized that they cannot win that war. Good evening listeners, combatants of the People's Liberation Army of Namibia plan and fellow countrymen. This is the voice of Namibia Luanda with Namibia in Perspective. Today we take an analytical look into the United Nations Independence Plan for Namibia of the United Nations Security Council Resolution 435 that has not been able to be implemented for the past six years. In the light of the decision of the Security Council to discontinue the contacts, it is now all the more urgent that this Council takes even greater initiative in trying to find ways for a speedy solution, a speedy and just solution to the problem so that the people of Namibia may achieve their independence. Resolution 435 call for elections in Namibia under the supervision of the United Nations leading to the independence of the territory. The plan was adopted by the entire international community, including South Africa. It has been swapped, it's demonstrated flexibility and the spirit of compromise which have made it possible for the progress to be made. Today, Namibia's independence is held hostage and the suffering of our people prolonged for the sake of the widely condemned Washington Pretoria Alliance. That there does remain one issue standing in the way of implementation of UN Security Council 435, Resolution 435. South Africa's position regarding the withdrawal of Cuban forces. It's America which has put a block 
on our, on our way to independence. It's America who have initiated this condition of the Cubans withdrawal from Angola. If it was not for, for America, Resolution 435 could have been implemented long time ago. And therefore I say that the American women should stand up in our favor, of course, to mobilize and to know also who is for the independence of Namibia. Just how far is Robben Island from the Yankees White House? I have no sight. I do not speak languages so foreign. The stars and zebra stripes are dazzling me. The U.S. president speaks, his foreign secretary cheats. Then just how far is Robben Island from the field of Waterloo? A few bushes away, a village or two in between, and the warrior sun will take you there. Ours is to lay a strong foundation upon which the future generation of Namibia will build a strong fortification by defeating the forces of colonialism and all the foreign invaders and by defending the territorial integrity of Namibia and see to it that the Namibian people will never again, never again fail in the hands of foreigners. <laughs> Independence of our country has been delayed far too long. We have the right to be free and we demand immediate independence for Namibia now.